Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. How can we, living in a place that, not, that does not always, that does not always honor the principles of our God, how can we make a bold stand for God in a place that often asks us to bow down and worship the idols of capitalism, materialism, and hedonism? How can we stand and live for God in a place that confesses on its dollar bill and many other documents in God we trust, but does not always act that way. Well, I think we have to have what Daniel had, dual citizenship. Daniel was a citizen of Babylon and served it well as we should serve our country well. But he also had citizenship in another kingdom. Citizenship in a kingdom that had not yet come but was coming. And the reason why Daniel, in the threat of even the lion's den, unjust persecution, could continue to trust God was because he had citizenship in a better country. Somebody ought to say amen. He understood this. Hear me, hear me. He understood that sometimes being part of of a country that confesses Christianity and being a Christian that sometimes they're not always synonymous. That sometimes because a country says they fear God does not go along with the practice of following God. Let me come a little bit closer. Why this is a great country and I've tried to encourage us uh, just a few minutes ago to be involved in the process to believe as Barack Obama often says, that we can be better than we are. That while we ought to be part of this, I believe in all of that, but let's just be honest today, sometimes being an American and being a Christian are not synonymous. The enslavement of Africans was an American act, but it was not a Christian act. The disenfranchisement of Native Americans was an American act, but it was not a Christian act. Hello, somebody. The ungodly experiment of intentionally not treating black men in the Tuskegee experiment was an American act, but it was not a Christian act. The CIA's complicity in the spread of crack cocaine in the ghettos of South Central Los Angeles was an American act, but not a Christian act. The systematic and systemic oppression of poor people of all colors and races is an American policy which sustains our capitalistic system, but it's not Christian. So please do not tell me that in order to be patri in order to be a Christian, I have to wave my flag all the time and never critique my country. America is a democracy, and democracies do not have the luxury of having its proverbial cake and eat it too. We can't be democratic and then make everybody act like Christians by legislation. Hear what I'm saying today. I'm just as disappointed as some of you are in the California Supreme Court's decision to allow gay marriage in our great state. But church, that's what you get in a democracy. That's what we fought for. We fought for the right to do as we please, and now we are experiencing democracy. That is why we must have dual citizenship. You see, Daniel did not see a disparity between the two. He made perfect peace with being a Babylonian Jew and a worshiper of Yahweh. For he knew when the time came, if he had to choose loyalty to the state or loyalty to Jehovah, he would always choose Jehovah. Ah, we are in a mess in this country, are we not? Has anyone almost, is there any witnesses here? Are there any witnesses here who almost had a heart attack when you saw, when you were putting gas in your car, how much? It went up. Almost went into cardiac arrest. 
And you know you put in the lowest grades you could possibly find. Your car might say premium, but that baby's getting un unleaded, regular unleaded today. We're in a mess. The subprime loan scandals and foreclosures, Riverside, you do know, the highest percentage of foreclosures right here where we live and minister. We're in a mess. We've got folks who are promising all kinds of things, knowing that they're only perhaps saying certain things to get into the White House. We're in a mess with the cyclones and tornadoes and the huge earthquake that decimated rural China. We're in a mess. We've got floods everywhere. We've got not just natural disaster, but unnatural disasters happening in our homes and in our bodies and, and distress and turmoil in our minds. And it's amidst this kind of oppression that I think Daniel's word comes to mind, that if you're going to make it from this kingdom to the next, you've got to sign up for citizenship now. This is what Jesus meant when he said to the disciples, let not your heart be troubled for what you see. Let not your heart be troubled because of the financial distress. Let not your heart be troubled because of what you see going on. Yes, if you are engaged in the process of democracy and civic engagement, that you can make it a little bit better. But how many know this thing is only going to get a little bit better? We will not perfect this union. That's just the bottom line. Biblical prophecy tells me that. We will not be all that we can dream to be. For there is another kingdom. And perhaps the reason is because this kingdom called the United States was never meant to last forever. For there is another kingdom coming. And he says, let not your heart be troubled because of what you're going through and what you see. Because, because if you have your citizenship in a better country, if you point your mind and set your affections on things above, that which is to come is better than anything you've seen. Daniel is able to stand for God. In fact, when you look there at verse 10, look back Daniel 6, 10 and 11. Look at what Daniel is doing. In the midst of all of this stuff going on in his country, in the midst of being persecuted for standing up for God in his country, although he has served them faithfully, look what Daniel does. He's kneeling down and he's praying. And the Bible says he's praying and he's praising. Now he didn't just do this because he got in trouble. The Bible says they knew he did it every day, so much to the point that they planned their attack around his faithfulness to his God. Which lets me know that he didn't just call on the name of Jesus when he got in trouble. He was calling on the name of Jesus every day. In fact, three times a day. That showed me that his citizenship was in another country. That he had his eye on something that they could not see. And that he was so faithful to the coming kingdom that it did not matter what was going on in the present kingdom. I wonder if we've got some folk here today who want to sign up, who, who might be able to testify that you have citizenship in another country. A and if you got citizenship in another country, you get some benefits, you know. Now, now I, am, I am a legal resident here in the United States. I am. I do not have my citizenship yet. I, I, I'm signing up for that. Uh, and as I was looking at it, I went to the website and I saw that you could get dual citizenship. I said, well, that, that's kind of interesting because then I can be a citizen of both Canada and the United States. Amen. <laughs> now, the reason why somebody probably said amen and they were probably Canadian is because there are some things that you get over there that you don't get here. Doesn't make one better than the other, not making that argument. This is a great country, that's why, I'm lay, that's why I'm staying here. But listen to this. I said to myself, uh, just in case this healthcare thing doesn't work out, <laughs> if I need a, you know, a little surgery or a little something, something, if I've got citizenship in another country, that offers that, I then am able to 